Good morning, you listen to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Santo Tercivia with Market Insights. Santo, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Kemp. Thank you. You're an economist, been in the business a long time. I wanted to talk today in light of these hearings in Washington and the consideration for adding floor covering as a tariffed item out of China and talk a little bit about the ramifications, how that would change the business, just based on the statistics that you have. Let's get into that. First off, a comment was made last week in the testimony. It's very interesting once you look at it, that if you roll it all up and you look at the flooring business, it hadn't changed a lot in the last 10 years. And if you look at the top-line number, you know, $23 billion, it's right. I mean, it's actually real close. When you look at 2007 and 2017, those two years were roughly $23 billion in sales, right? That's absolutely correct. The one thing that's different is back in 2007, we were in the midst of a inflated housing bubble. Yeah. And a lot of floors were going into houses that, by all intents and purposes, shouldn't have been built. And we were doing over $2 million, uh, housing starts back then, yeah. or close to it. And normally, a million and a half is typical for the United States. That equals household formation. So, well, that's one factor. But the, the other big thing is the sales, the shift from soft to hard. Exactly. Take us through those numbers. You just sent them to me yesterday because you look at resilient and where it is today versus where it was. Tell us the numbers. Well, back in 2007, resilient was about 8.5% of the total dollar market in the yeah. United States. Yeah. It's double that now. Laminate is about flat. Uh Uh, Wood has grown significantly, maybe by a third. Mm -hmm. Ceramic tile is up a similar amount. And carpet is down. Mm -hmm. Carpet is down 15 basis points, approximately. So all of that is a dramatic shift in the kinds of floorings Americans are purchasing. Now, the other thing I would suggest is if the tariffs go through... Well, let me just say, imports represent just short of half of the U.S. market, and that's from everywhere. However, half the imports come from China, Mm -hmm. or just short of half, and most of that is low-end product. If we impose tariffs on that, it is going to significantly change the pricing nature of and pricing distribution of the U.S. market. It's going to price people out of the market, I'm convinced because it's going to hurt the low end most of all. And typically in tariff situations like this, if you look at the steel industry, you look at the auto industry over time, prices will rise, even domestically produced prices will rise. The sum and substance of it is you're going to have two big effects. One, it's going to radically disrupt the logistical chain for companies that do import today, and it's going to change the pricing structure of the market. And those are two big unintended, I'm always cognizant of unintended consequences. So those are two unknowns that could be negative or positive consequences. I think mainly they'd be negative. Yeah, let me mirror what you just said, because I think it's the headline here. It's a 25% of what's consumed from a dollar perspective in this country. It comes from China, 25%. So that's a, it's that's a big correct. number. That's a yeah, big just number. a little bit short of that. Yeah. Let's go through the resilient number because I think it's interesting to look at specifically at the number. In 2007, the resilient category was just about $1.9 billion. Okay. Right. It's right. just under $4 billion now. So what was sold 10 Well, the guys, the business that have been in this business in 10 years will tell you that 10 years ago was about the time we were shifting from felt back sheet to glass back sheet. And this whole LVT, especially rigid LVT, hadn't been in- introduced in the market yet, had it? No, not in any big way, no. And even today, if you look at what's domestically produced versus what's imported, what's imported is the rigid product. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of flexible product, too, but the vast majority right now of rigid product is imported. And there is a significantly less volume of production in the United States for board product right now that it was going to be difficult to fulfill that product if it's 
price structure has shifted or if it's barred from the market. Yeah, you actually shared some numbers with me yesterday. You told me that of the $2.7 billion worth of LVT sold in this country this year, so these are estimates because the year's not over yet, that $1.6 billion of that is rigid, and that's right. 60%, and that's all coming from China, isn't it? Right, just about, yeah. And so the U.S. manufacturers will have to ramp up a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> to make up $1.6 billion, yeah. and that's going to disrupt logistics. The question becomes, can they substitute flexible for rigid? You know, we've done, you and I, uh, Floor Focus and Market Insights together have done surveys of consumers, yeah. and the product that is the most desirable, hands down, in the United States is wood and wood looks. And the rigid LVT obviously appeals to consumers because it looks like wood. It's a board. It yeah. snaps together just like wood. It goes down like wood. Whereas the flexible product is a much tougher sell for that. So there's some big changes coming in the marketplace potentially, and it's going to be difficult to see how it shakes out, I think. Yeah, another factor, right before we leave this topic that we need to dial in, is the cost of the flooring the material, and then the installed cost, it's usually about half. So when you start thinking about the installation labor and what the impact might be to installation labor when these different categories of product change, that's a factor as well, isn't it? Right. With the price changes, it's going to shift the competition between ceramic tile, hardwood, all these other products. So you're not only going to change the market within resilient, you're going to shift the competitive set. And that has strong implications for deselection of product and consumers now being able to look at real wood or to look at ceramic tile or other products. Mm -hmm. And price-wise, they become more competitive. Santo, I've got to ask you, this all, all this debate, uh, it's making your phone ring. A lot of people want some numbers, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. All right, Santos, great to catch up with you again. We've been talking to Santo Tercivia with Market Insights, and you've been listening to Kempar and Florelli.net.